Have you ever wanted to go on an adventure, maybe solo, maybe with a few friends, but your family is hesitant about letting you go because maybe they fear something bad could happen to you? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over a few things, some strategies that you might could use to kind of convince your family or to kind of teach your family that there really isn't that much to fear if you go on an adventure by yourself or with some other people. What's up everybody, Trent Smith here with another video trying to teach and inspire you folks how to get out there and enjoy the adventure that you've dreamed about. Before we get into things, I have a quick announcement to make for you folks. That's the dates for the 2020 Rocket Dock event that I'm hosting. Again, this will be the third year. This year it's going to be September the 30th through October the 4th. Now registration is going to open early for all current patrons on June 21st and they're going to open to all attendees on June 28th. If you're new to the channel and don't know what Rocket Dock is, it's a five day camping and paddling event that I put on, I host, and last year we had 151 people come from across the country. This year I think we're having people come from across the globe, so it's gonna be amazing. Uh, I have videos about it, and there's information at trittsmith.live slash rockadoc. I have a link below for you good folks so you can go learn about it and maybe join in on the good times. So in this video, we're gonna go over a few things, like why is your family hesitant, or what are they worried about? Then I'm gonna share with you some statistics that are gonna kinda of show that amateur adventuring really isn't all that dangerous. Then I'm gonna share with you some tips and some things to do that can ease their worries so you can get out there. And by the way, hang out to the end of the video and I'm gonna share what I did and how I kinda of live my life in a way that makes my family where now when I say I wanna go do this trip where they're like, Okay, whatever trip, just go. Okay, so why are they hesitant? What are they so worried about? Well, first thing I'll suggest is to ask them, hey, you know, what makes you worry? You know, what makes you hesitant to let me go off on this venture? And then if it's something that is out of your control, like, you know, a snake bite or the weather or things like that, you, know, you can do some research or share with them some of the, the statistics that I'm gonna share with you in just a moment. Then once you have some good knowledge and data in your hands, you can go and revisit them and kind of say, hey look, it's really not as big of a deal as you might think it is. Like I mentioned a moment ago, snake bites. Let's take that for instance. In the US, there's less than five people who die every year of venomous snake bites. That's really not that many considering how many people are out there in the outdoors every single day. One of the kind of big ones that people bring up to me, like not my family anymore, but people who are like commenting on my videos, they say, Trip, what about the alligators? How do you deal with the alligators? You're out there swimming and you're paddling with all these gators? And I'm thinking, well, they're really not as dangerous as you think. In the US alone, only eight people have died since 2010 from alligator attacks. And most of those times could have been prevented or if they would have been using better judgment and better caution, that wouldn't have occurred. Now, if you go and you approach your family with this stuff, you may not want to tell them the exact numbers like, well, only eight people have died. You may want to be like, you know, there's very, very few people have died from alligators and snakes. Look, it's not something for you to worry about. Something else could be going through their head is, what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to do it? And are you even capable of going and doing this adventure you want to do? A lot of times this can be easy to overcome. If you do some good planning, do your research, gain some knowledge, and you can show that to them that say, hey, I am ready, I'm capable of making this trip. And also start off with a small trip that you are ready and that you are capable of. You don't have to circumnavigate Australia or New Zealand. You can always start small with baby steps. That's what everyone should do, really. Real quick, I wanna apologize. I'm out here trying to film. There's some weather coming in. I've got raindrops on the lens. I don't know if you guys can see that. The wind's blowing. I'm really sorry, but I'm trying to get a video out for you folks. There's been things happening in my life, but I'm hustling, trying to make it happen for y'all, all right? And hey, if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you're notified whenever I post a new video or go live. Okay, now back at it with a few statistics. Now, nearly 30% of all camping-related deaths are from heart attacks or treacherous roads. So what does this tell us? Well, all right, heart attacks, a lot of times, it may not be, or probably, I seriously doubt it was directly related from the things that they were doing from camping. It wasn't caused by camping, it was caused by some sort of other health issue, right? And then treacherous roads, well, that's usually when we're traveling to and from our camping destination. So what this is kind of telling us is that we're more than likely just to die in our everyday lives than going camping and living an adventure. So you better get out there and live an adventure. Especially if that's what you want to do. If that's your dream, you gotta chase it, you gotta go after it, you gotta make it happen. 
Now let's look at how and why most incidents occur. Most camping related deaths or adventure or paddling related deaths happen from falls or drowning. And a lot of times it's because the people are in a situation that they can't handle or they're not prepared for that situation. If you drown, a lot of times people drown because they're not wearing a PFD when they should have been wearing one. Or you know maybe they aren't a good enough of a swimmer. A lot of times people drown because they really aren't good swimmers. But, but there are times when also great swimmers can drown too. But if you wear your PFD whenever you need to, granted I know there's a lot of people out there who say wear your PFD all the time. I'm not one of those people. But I say use your best judgment, use wise judgment and wear your PFD when you need to. And when it comes to falls, well, a lot of times people are falling because they are doing something they're not supposed to, something they're not equipped for, or something that they're not experienced enough to do. Maybe they're on a crazy trail, or maybe they're going off trail, they're trying to get this awesome camera shot, or they're trying to do something or another, or they're out in adverse conditions that they're not uh, adequately equipped for. You just have to use your best judgment. So what I'm saying is, if when you're out there, you can prevent a lot of falls by using proper judgment, and you know just being cautious then once you do that camping and paddling adventures aren't all that historically dangerous all right now i've got three tips for you to help ease their worries and really these are things you should be doing anyway all right the first is start small just start with you know simple day trips and then you know maybe if you want to do a camping trip and your family's worried about you or maybe you're inexperienced go to a designated campground go with a group gain some experience with people who have been there who have done that come to rock a you know, do other type of trips with groups of people and learn from that. Something else you should always do is to have a plan and also leave your plan with your family or your friends. This could be things like maps of where you're going to be, the route you're going to take, where you're going to be parking, even leaving them the contact information of someone who you may be nearby, like if you're going to a state park, what about the contact information of that park? Next is to have a communications plan. Say, hey, I'm going to contact you uh, at such and such a time. And, and say, if I don't contact you by such and such a time, don't worry, because maybe I don't have service. If I don't contact you by this extended time, then you can use the emergency contacts that you left them to come and rescue you. But I don't know, you gotta be very, very careful whenever you just even talk about that, because they can be like, oh my goodness, really? Oh my, and you know, that can make them worry even more. A lot of times when it comes to cell service, you may not know, okay, am I gonna have service when I'm going down this river? Well, there may be some people you can ask. Like if anyone has done that trip in the past, you can contact that person and say, hey, did you have cell service? But then what if you don't have cell service? Or what if you're worried or your family's worried that you may not have cell service? Well, there are devices you can get, like a spot. I actually have one, <laughs> I was supposed to, Anyways, I have a spot and I've only used it one time years ago when I was down in the Florida Keys, but they're very cool because you can actually send emails and text messages to your family via GPS if you don't have cell service. Also, be prepared and share with your family that, hey, I am prepared. I'm adequately equipped with knowledge and the correct gear to safely complete this adventure. Granted, you may not want to share every single little piece of gear like I have a tourniquet in case I cut my leg off or you know, something crazy. You, know, you want to be gentle whenever you're explaining this stuff to them. Just say, hey, I have a good first aid kit. You know, I have some emergency stuff. I've got all the right equipment. I'll be warm. I'll be safe. I've got a great PFD. Don't you worry. And I know how to use it. I have learned all this stuff and I have learned the route. I know the area. You know, I know my craft. I know myself. I know my limits. Don't worry. I'm prepared. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, how about a quick thumbs up? It really helps the channel and I appreciate it so much. Okay, so now about me personally, how did I get my family on board and acclimated, so to speak, with me going on these adventures without them worrying? I just gave you guys some good safety tips, you know, like leaving a plan and stuff. A lot of times I don't really do very well on that anymore, but that's basically because my, my family's like, okay, Trip's gonna go and he's gonna come back. He's gonna be all right, right? Because because they know that I am prepared. They know that I have the knowledge, that, I, that I'm healthy enough, that I'm, you know, equipped enough to go and do these adventures. So basically, over time, I demonstrated that I was responsible, that I was capable, that I was knowledgeable enough to go and do these things and to come back home safely. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes push the envelope, maybe get in some sticky situations, but I usually am pretty sure that I'm gonna be fine through them all, so, you know. You just gotta go with it. You gotta live a little bit, right? But you don't have to share that with them, okay? <laughs> Alright folks, thanks for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed it, and I will see y'all in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya.